everyone. So you may have guessed, I'm at the airport today. And I want to share with you some things that make uh, traveling a little easier when you're doing a lot of flying in and out of town. I came back a couple of weeks ago from Amsterdam and uh, we had a great time. It was a good trip. We followed all these rules and pretty much had an uneventful return. But there's a few times where we have had some times where we've come back and just finding the vehicle and getting through the airport, our own airport, uh, is really frustrating, especially if you come off an 8, 10, 12, or more hour flight. So today I thought I'd go over a few things that we've come up with in the past few years that really help us travel a lot better. So the first one I want to go over with is where we'd like to park. We always park at either the economy long term or the off-site economy long term. And I'll tell you there's a difference and I'll get back to that in a little bit. And there's also on-site uh, long term, which is right across from the gate, but you wind up spending $200 on a week-long vacation just on parking, and I got better things to do with my $200 than that. So one of the first things we like to do is, as you can see, I'm parked right here. We like to park facing out. We like to pick an outward-facing spot so you know if you run the perimeter of the floor that you're on, you're going to see your car. Parking internally seems like a good idea because you take less damage and weather-wise, things like that, but not really. It just becomes more frustrating. Every row almost looks the same, even when you have the numbers written down and take pictures of the sign. It's just a heck of a lot easier to get off the elevator if you can get close by on an outside lane. So, <clears throat> next thing I like to do is come right up to the sign that's usually right in front of my car, and then I just snap a picture of it because it comes in handy later on. So that's one of our major tips. We come up, we get a picture of the sign, we park facing out. Hopefully there's beautiful buildings in the background. If not, you know you're on an outside edge. So we head on into the terminal, show you a couple things that made our life easier in there. Maybe they'll help you too. exchange in the airport that you travel to or from in the United States. The rate is horrendous and it is practically criminal the way they treat you, uh, whether you're trading in or picking up, but it is a great alternative for not having to hit an ATM when you first get overseas and you actually have some currency in your pocket. So I always recommend, you know, 50, at least 20 get something in your pocket so this way when you get over there you'd be surprised it's it's a lot of places are cash only and at least cash will get you a lot better deal than it will in a lot of you know than it will with credit uh, it's the worst feeling in the world when you show up somewhere at say five in the morning like many overseas flights do come in and you step outside and you know everybody's looking around and the only people that are there are cash only cabs and you're backpacking it maybe two, three, four kilometers all the way to the hostel or the hotel you've chosen. It makes it a bad experience to start with. So as much as I'm not a big fan of these people behind me, they are a great alternative to at least showing up with some cash. If not, what we did was we checked with a local bank that does exchange for free and I actually opened an account just for that. So I would look into that as well. But again, it's the devil's option, but it's still better than showing up with American dollars and you know, not being able to even get a cab ride or you know, a bottle of water. So, you know, another tip, travel tip, bite the bullet, break a 20, hit these people, get it done. is the cell phone lot. If you know that your flight may be delayed or the person that's picking you up just wants to get to the airport ahead of time but parking is always ridiculous, one of the best alternatives that most major airports have come up with is this new cell phone lot area. The cell phone lot allows you to park, stay here for as long as you need to. Uh, they have an arrival and departure board, they have restroom facilities, they have vending machines at a lot of them. As you can see behind me, in a lot of the very big airports, they have free electric charging stations for your electric cars. So not only is it a benefit for uh, when someone's picking you up if they have an electric car, but just FYI, if you're 
any major in any major city and you happen to be riding in a electric car and you're really low and you need some free charging most of these exist now here in the US almost every major airport has them it's free it's in the alternate lot or the cell phone lot or the off-site lot they have a lot of different names for it but this is definitely something you want to take advantage of but getting back to the main focus here in the cell phone lot your transportation can wait uh, use the rest facilities use the Wi-Fi for free uh, keep in touch with you if possible definitely see how long your flights delayed when it's coming in at what time what gate uh, everything that you really need to know so one of the next things I want to discuss with you is this sweet thing behind me here called TSA PreCheck it's really worth the $85 to go ahead and get that done because getting through security becomes almost an instant deal. It removes you from having to take off your shoes, pull out your liquids, take out your, uh, unpack your backpack. It makes them really happy and you know making them happy is not a bad thing. Uh, it's for five years, it's good at all uh, airports in the United States. It helps TSA um, recognize that you are a trusted passenger. They actually put a number on your ticket when you fly and with that particular number on your ticket you're able to go into that express line. Last time we just flew international I don't think I spent more than five minutes lying uh, domestically waiting on uh, TSA. Didn't have to remove anything, didn't have to take anything out. There was nothing to do with my liquids or electronics. Uh, they actually had a big smile on their face. There was maybe two other, three other couples in line with us so it was pretty much just us and that's it. Anyway, uh, getting back on point, like I said, it's really worth your money to get back in here, get the TSA pre-check done. They're sweet people, it makes them happy, it changes your airport experience dramatically. But, you know, if you like the whole uh, touchy-feely game they play, then by all means, don't bother. It's, it's then it's not worth it because they won't have fun with you anymore after you do that. But for sure, TSA pre-check, do it. so tired and your autopilot kicks in and all you want to do is get back in your car and you see that sign behind me and it says economy parking and you're like I'm in economy parking that is the worst thing that can happen to you and I'll tell you why because when you come off the 12-hour flight you're back into autopilot mode you think you're at home in an airport where you are very familiar and then you happen upon one of these signs and immediately you make the mistake of thinking, I know where I'm going. You say to yourself, I'm in the economy parking lot, and that's the shuttle. I took a shuttle, and therefore, I should be back at my car any minute now. But the fact of the matter is, if your airport is anything like my airport, there are actually now several levels of economy parking. Many of them have shuttles that go to them. And depending on whether it was blue field, red field, long-term economy, short-term economy, 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 you could be headed to the wrong place. And up you go. You're headed up and you're thinking this is going to be wonderful. I'm going to be sitting in my car in all of five minutes. And you're about to realize, probably not until after you get off the tram, that this is not the economy train you're looking for. If you're like me and you're the economy economy traveler, then this is the rich guy's economy lot. And the real economy lot lies somewhere other than here in the total opposite building. So that's why it's so super important to know that you put your car in a lot that is either connected to the terminal or off-site. That is the new thing, because there is an off-site train now in our terminal, so if you don't take the off-site train, then you've taken the wrong train. That's just one of the things that, one of the few things that really help distinguish whether it's gonna be a good ending to the trip or a absolute nightmare ending to your trip. Do you get back and take the wrong train and spend 20 minutes going the other way and the partner or the people you're with just absolutely have a fit with you? Or are you lucky enough to know that what you're doing, write it down, think about it, stop, get off the plane, remind yourself, on-site economy, off-site economy, there's a lot of different things that go on, so you need to know exactly where you're going and what you're doing. 
It turns a good flight into a bad one quickly. It turns a happy day into a sad one. And it makes your partner absolutely aggravated and frustrated. So that's just another thing. As you see, they're just finishing remodeling our airport. It's about every chain restaurant you can imagine here. It's going to be loaded with artworks. And it's going to be actually a spot to come hang out. I think I may come back and do it just a hang out. Let's see what they got to drink and eat here type video next. just write a few things down and follow the same procedures over and over it really uh, helps make the entire uh, you know welcome home and leaving experience quite easy uh, one of the things I didn't point out earlier that I just want to uh, reiterate is when I do park out facing outwards I usually park in the same spot every time it's on an upper floor not exactly the roof but usually only one or two below I park in the same exact spot every time it's always available because it's not the closest spot in the building, uh, but it's etched in my brain. It's C9, whether I'm going on a short trip or a long trip, you know, pick yourself a good favorite spot. It's in a dry area. It's up high. It's not well traveled, but there's plenty of security around it. It faces the elevator. It's in an out facing wall. So, you know, currency exchange, I usually go from there right to that if I haven't hit it already. You know, and then I, I make note, I write down on that little card that they give you what row, what number, I flip my camera around, I take a picture of it, I get my phone out, boom, two seconds, we use this thing for everything, get the phone out, fire it up, take a picture of it, come back, usually right before we land, I jump onto the phone, I check it out, and I get off, I got a clear head, I go, oh yeah, I'm not in the in-building economy, I am in, in the far, far outskirts economy where I took a bus instead of a tram because we were away for a month instead of a week, so... Like I said, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. Love you. Have a great evening.